And I don't mean setting goals or having more achievements. I mean, I want to intentionally live my life in a way that makes me happy. Welcome or welcome back to the Sweater Weather Podcast. My name is Pamela and I'm coming to you from Quebec, Canada. This is a podcast about knitting and sometimes crochet and other crafty things that I might get up to from time to time. Uh, I will share those with you as well. Um, it's been a while since I podcasted it. I did vlogmas, uh, just this past Christmas and that was fun, but it was definitely a lot of work. And, um, so I took a break <laughs> and now I am podcasting again today. So it's Sunday, February 5th. And again, it's been a while since I podcasted. Um, well, that is actually one of my things that I would like to accomplish in 2023. I would like to uh, podcast more regularly. Optimally, I would really like to podcast once per week because I think that would, um, you know, foster more of a community and more of a relationship. Um, Sometimes it's hard when you go a few weeks or even a month without podcasting because you have maybe too much to share. Um, I, I would like to keep the length of the podcast um, down to definitely under an hour, even under 40 minutes. And I think that's more doable if I podcast once per week. So I think I would like to have that as an intention um, I'm not going to feel bad if I'm not able to accomplish it because I do work full time and life gets in the way and we're not always able to get done the things that we would like to. And I don't want the podcast to become a source of stress, just like I don't want uh, my knitting to become a source of stress. And I think that's one of the other things I've always wanted to podcast once per week, but I always had concerns that I wouldn't have things to show you every week. Having said that, I may not have a finished object every week, but I definitely will have made some progress. So for sure, I would be able to share that with you. So um, it's a cold and overcast day here. I have a hot cup of black coffee. It is a um, hazelnut flavored coffee that uh, we get from Costco. And we have the type of coffee maker that has a burr grinder built in. And the smell of that coffee grinding and then brewing, brewing, <laughs> brewing. <laughs> Um, it just, it's the best smell in the world. It really is. Um, with a nice cup of coffee like that. I think the brand name is Zavita from Costco. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but I think it's Zavita. I just find it's uh, so much easier to drink my coffee black. If, uh, the coffee has a nice smell and a nice, um, Flavor. It doesn't have to be a flavored type of coffee. It can just be a, a regular roast. But um, if it's a good quality roast and a fresh coffee, then I can drink it black. 
which I enjoy. Okay, if I'm going to try and keep this video um, under 45 minutes or under 40 minutes, I better get started. Um, first of all, I'm just going to start with what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing uh, my Love Note sweater. Um, this is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. You may not have recognized it because I have um, knit it without the very distinctive lace pattern that the Tin Can Knits sweater comes with. Um, but I just wanted sort of like a sweatshirt feeling type of garment. So I knit it without the lace. Um, there were two, when I knit this, there were two make-alongs going on One uh, for, for the Love Note sweater. One was the Four City Knit Girls, I believe, had a knit along going on. And then there was um, Nicole from the Professor Pearl podcast. Um, she has knit quite a few Love Note sweaters and um, she inspired me to knit this one as well. So this sweater is knit with a four ply fingering weight yarn from Midnight Cravings in their Lush base. Um, it is in the color Way Wild Rose and it's paired with a Kid Silk Mohair, a uh, very light colored um, creamy white. So I did make be I did make additional modifications beyond uh, omitting the lace pattern. I also um, made full length sleeves, and I have um, a cuff. I, I made the cuff and the ribbing at the bottom longer than the pattern calls for, and I did a twisted rib to make the, the ribbing a little neater. I also made my sweater longer because I don't really enjoy a cropped sweater or too cropped of a sweater. I don't wear high-waisted garments like uh, jeans or skirts, generally speaking. I do have a few, but um, in, in general, I don't like a high-waisted pant or skirt. Um, the other thing is I I'm kind of concerned that if I knit a bunch of cropped sweaters, that when that high-waisted look goes out of style, I will have sweaters that are too short for me. Now, granted, you can always wear a shirt underneath like I'm doing now, and the shirt that, I'm, that I have on underneath the sweater is longer. Um, so that's always an option, but I think I would just prefer to knit something that I feel more confident um, will I will use for a longer period of time. So I'll start with this these this first finished object. So this isn't a pattern per se. I wasn't following a pattern. I cast on 64 stitches and then knit 30 rounds of two by two ribbing. Then I used the um, coordinating mini skein that came with this yarn, which I'll talk about in a second, to knit a heel flap and gusset. And then I continued down the instep in the two by two ribbing. I just find that the stretchiness gives um, a really nice fit. So I like to continue with the ribbing. And then on the bottom, I don't, uh, there's no ribbing on the bottom. And then when I get, got to the toe, I just do a simple wedge toe. Again, using the uh, coordinating mini skein that came with this yarn. So this yarn comes from the Cozy Knitter. It is a colorway called Country Christmas. And I think it's really beautiful. I still have quite a lot of this yarn left because I didn't, I just did shorty socks. Um, I used the magic loop method to knit the socks. They fit really nicely and I'm happy. 
they're just a tad, just a tad loose. So what I'm going to do, I think, is instead of casting on 64 stitches um, when I make my next pair, I think I'm going to try casting on 60 stitches and just see how that goes. So there's that. Um, I also completed this cowl. Maybe you can see it better if I hold it up like this. So I also completed this cowl. It's the Leftover City by Casey Hurley. I did a German twisted cast on and then a half twisted rib ribbing. I knit this using mini skeins that I got at my local yarn store. It's actually a goat mohair and the goats are raised um, close to here. And the owner of that farm um, spins and dyes her own yarn. When I completed this cowl, um, I thought it was going to be too picky. Let me just throw it on. So you can see what it looks like on. So I thought it was going to be, oh, mohair, of course. Oh, cozy. So I thought it was going to be too picky. Um, but after I blocked it, it softened up so much, there's, there's very little pickiness left. Sorry little bits of mohair. Now I want to leave this on because it's really nice and cozy. When I blocked this cowl, I put a color catcher in with the, uh, I used soak and some lukewarm water and I put a color catcher in um, because I thought that some of these colors were very saturated as opposed to some of these other ones that are very pale and i don't know if you can see that but um the color catcher did catch a lot of the dark burgundy dye but some did spread onto the lighter silvery gray color there which is fine that's not a big deal i like it anyway really nice it's really cozy kind of matches what I'm wearing um I was playing yarn chicken at the end actually let me take this off for a second so I can show you I was playing yarn chicken at the end or um thankfully I was weighing these skeins as I went so my original intention was to have the gray at the beginning and the gray at the end but as you can see that didn't work out so after i did the ribbing and um the beginning part of the pattern i realized that i had less than half of the gray mini skein left so i uh fudged a bit so what i did was I knit the gray, then the dark burgundy, the pink, the dark green, and then a light green, and then the gray in the middle. Then I then I went back the other way. So then I went light green, dark green, light pink, and then I finished off with the uh, dark burgundy color. So in the middle, there the contrast is very uh, low contrast in the middle and higher contrast on the edges. So that's not the way I originally intended it. What I wanted was a high contrast, so a light 
a dark, a light, a dark throughout, but I just had to change that a bit. And I'm actually pretty happy with the result anyways. I like the way that it ended up turning out. So the other thing that I uh, completed was another cowl. I'm going to hold it up so you can see the whole thing. It's big. It's it's really so big. So this is the Chunky Broadway cowl. You can see it's got cables on it. It's got a neat cable pattern on there. I love knitting cables. It's one of my favorite things. I have discovered. This is a YouTube tutorial by Crazy Hands and the pattern itself is available on the Crazy Hands website. It's not available on Ravelry. So um, I was able to knit this in an afternoon because it uses a, a bulky yarn and large needles. So I use Lion Brand Thick and Quick for this in the colorway barley and the needle size I'm just checking my notes uh, it was a nine millimeter needle which is a 13 us so it knits up really quickly however i did find it hurt my hands like to knit with needles that large i found it did hurt my hands but uh it's a nice quick knit and it's a free pattern and it's nice and squishy and I know it'll be warm. So that is done. Okay, so those are my finished objects. I do have some whips as well. So this is a baby blanket that I'm knitting for a friend of mine who's expecting. It's called Les Petite Shows. And I think it's really coming out very nicely. Oh, I'm showing you the wrong side. <sighs> okay. I think it's coming out really nicely. I think the colors are really fun. So this is an all cotton yarn. So this is a free pattern by the Katia Yarn Company. Um, and so it uses all of their yarn. And I wanted, I liked the way it looked. So I actually bought a kit for this so that I would have all the right colors um, to go with the pattern. The, the cotton is really nice and soft. It's gonna make an amazing baby blanket. I can see that my color work is a bit tighter than I usually do. And I think that might be, I'm not sure why. I'm usually pretty good at keeping my stitches loose when I'm doing color work, but I can see it's a bit tight and I'm really hoping that that will block out. Um, it's taking me a, a while. The pattern instructions there were some things I wasn't clear about. So this was um this baby blanket. So Katya runs a make along every year. And this was part of their make along. I forget which year it was. I think it might have been 2021, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So Katya has produced some YouTube videos to help with this pattern. You can see there, there in this pattern, there's some baubles, there's some texture, there's some color work, um, there's some lace, just uh, simple lace. I found the YouTube videos a little bit hard to follow. The reason being that there, the YouTube videos are not in English. I think they're in Spanish, and. Then what they've done is for different languages, they put different subtitles. So you can watch the subtitles in French or in English. Um, but it's hard. I find it hard to watch what they're doing and also be reading the subtitles. So I had to watch it a few times, um, read the subtitles and then watch the video. 
There were just a few sections that I wasn't um, 100% sure of, but mostly the pattern's pretty simple to follow. It's just a few, there were a few areas that I wanted to make sure I wasn't um, messing it up. Anyways, I'm very happy with that. I've kind of put it aside a little bit, um, just for maybe uh, the past few days. But I need to pick it up again because the person that I'm knitting this for is expecting uh, in the next few weeks. And I would like to have it done by the time the baby comes or at least shortly after that. So here's the yarn that I'm using. Such pretty colors. This one. I'm, I feel like I may have some left over after, but it's, it's hard to tell. The yarn is Katia Missouri. And I cannot remember, I cannot remember where I purchased this kit. I am enjoying working on this project. Definitely learning some new things. Another project that I have on the needles right now is the Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose from Caddy Jack's Knits. The way um, she designed the shrug, it's a free pattern. So this is a one by one ribbed pattern. And the way she designed it was to have um, yarn paired with mohair and have, it has pretty distinctive stripes, but I wanted to try something different. So I um, used a worsted weight yarn. So I'm using a plain white, what is the colorway, is there a colorway? No, oh, there's just a there's just a number for the colorway, but it is white, and this is Estelle worsted. So, just looking at it's a fifty percent acrylic, forty percent wool, ten percent nylon yarn. It's nice and soft and squishy. I'm pairing it with this mohair, which is uh, another yarn by Katya. This is called Seta Kid Moda, and this is a color changing yarn. You can see here, this this one is almost done. I find that this color is getting too dark though. So what I'm going to do, so this is, this, this um, mohair is very thick. So there are three strands um, with this mohair. And what happens is, um, to change colors, they what they do is they start changing one strand at a time to the new color and then it fades in. So you can see here it started with uh, a bluey green and then that faded into like a very light taupey color, which faded into kind of... Let's see a mustardy color. I don't know what you would call that. Faded into somewhat of like a caramelly color and now it's fading into this like dark, almost a dark pink. I find it a little bit too dark for me. I like the color, but because I'm only half done and I still have to use this one, I think this is going to be too much of a, a too much, too jarring of a change. So what I'm going to do is I am now going to start using two of two strands of this mohair and one strand of this mohair. And then after a round, I'll change to two strands of this one and only one strand of this one. And then finally completely uh, move to three strands of this mohair. So that's the plan. It sounds easy enough. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> um, I'm really enjoying this. This is fun and easy and 
I think that I can see myself making more than one of these. So I actually think I would have been done this by now. Uh, it knits up super quick. Had I been a monogamous knitter, it definitely would be done. Um, but I've also been working on spending a lot of time on the baby blanket and I knit the cowls. So as soon as I can show this some love, I feel like it will be done fairly quickly and off the needles. I forgot to mention that all of these projects will be linked down below um, and you'll be able to find all the details. So my final active work in progress, because I do have a lot of whips, but I'm only showing you my active whips, um, is the half and half wrap by Pearl Soho. I'm sure you are very familiar with this. So many people have knit it. Um, it's an extremely popular, it's an extremely popular free pattern. I'm very close. I think I'm very close to being done. Um, I've calculated it out and I think I'm about 25 hours away from being done, which sounds like a lot, but this is a huge project. I, I knit the largest size, so it's really big and I can't wait to have it. I have some uh, made some mistakes in here but I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I just want the finished item. And I don't think the mistakes are going to be that visible when I'm done. Um, the two modifications I've made are the two modifications that almost um, everybody that I've seen talk about this on YouTube have made, which is, um, as most people have done, I've changed from the um, rapid turn short rows to uh, German short rows, which makes it super easy. And I just followed the um, Caddy Jack's tutorial about how to do those German short rows specifically with this wrap and it made things so much easier. And then the other thing I've done is a an I-cord border. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to hide my eyes. There we go. So this is not the I-cord border where you slip the last three stitches. This this border is one where you um you so you do get to the last three stitches, but then you bring the yarn to the front, you slip that one, you knit the second stitch, you slip the third stitch. And then you turn it around and you do it the opposite way. So you knit, slip, knit. Um, I, I like the way this one looks. And I'm familiar with this one from knitting it on other projects. So I just decided to stick with what I know. Even though I did mess it up in one spot. And it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty noticeable. But I don't care. Anyways. I have already bought the yarn to do another one when this one's over. So I've been working on this project for a long time. So I'm using the linen quill yarn that the pattern calls for from Pearl Soho. This is the vintage Celadon. And the green, I think the green is called spruce. It's either spruce or juniper, but I think it I think it's spruce. Um and they're both the linen quill and fingering weight from Pearl Soho. I, I'm really loving it. Um, so a lot of people find this particular project a little bit tedious might be too strong a word, but many people don't like just knitting back and forth um, for this many stitches because it, it does a lot of rows, a lot of stitches. But I personally find it to be a comfort knit. And I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. Um, sometimes I want to do color work or I want to do a pattern. Very infrequently do I want to do lace. I do not enjoy doing lace unless it's super simple. And even then 
I'm honestly not crazy about it. Um, I prefer doing texture, cables, um, that sort of thing. And when I'm not, when I'm not filling up to much of anything, I like to just knit. So this I find to be a very comforting project. Um, and as I said, even though I'm now ready to have it off the needles because it's been months of working on it, um, and I, I want the, the final product, I will probably cast on another one almost immediately. I've already purchased the yarn uh, from Pearl Soho for that project, and I'm kind of excited to try that. Now my thought is, and I may change my mind, but my thought is that it's probably a really good project to learn how to do continental knitting. And I've been kind of experimenting and trying it out a little bit on this one. But I think with the next one, I'm going to, because I already have one, I'm not going to be in a rush to get the next one done. Um, I can take my time and I think what I will do is make an effort to knit that project strictly continental and just see how it goes. See if it starts to feel natural for me after that. And if it does, then maybe I can incorporate it into other projects because I really love to do color work. I love the way it, um, I enjoy color work and I know that continental knitters um, can do color work a little bit easier. It's, they don't have to drop the yarn and pick up a different color. That's what I find I do. I don't even knit with one in each hand. I, I'm a thrower, so I'm constantly putting the color work down and picking it up. So for the leftover city cowl, because there's one by one color work on there, I was constantly putting down and picking up. And that part I found not fun. Whereas if I had been doing it continentally and I could have just picked up whichever color I needed, I think that I would have enjoyed it more. So again, this is my half and half wrap by Pearl Soho. Um, hopefully we'll have it done soon. Looking forward to that. I also have another project here. So I know I said that was my last whip. So this is not an active whip. I'm going to show it to you really quickly because I didn't make much of a start on it and I'm going to frog it. Okay. So maybe some of you recognize this, maybe you don't. <laughs> uh, this is the start of the Twists and Turns Shawl by Stephen West. You may recognize the color because I'm using the vintage Celadon um, linen quill from Pearl Soho along with a gray yarn called Flamel. It's a fingering weight yarn. Um, I won't get too much into the yarn because as I mentioned, I'm not going to keep the project. It started off pretty good and you probably don't recognize it because I haven't this is what it this is what the project looks like before you loop these through each other and make like a big big knit stitch. I was very excited to take part in the mystery knit along this year, but what happened was I just found it to be so much I'm not a fast knitter. I found it to be so much knitting. I quickly fell way behind. Um, everybody else or not everybody else but I quickly fell behind and when some people were finishing theirs up in the last weeks of the mystery knit along well I was still here so and this is not this has nothing to do with seeing it I didn't mind that I had seen people's finished um, projects as a matter of fact I, I enjoyed seeing people's finished projects this was just more or less um, kind of losing steam or losing because I wasn't able to keep up with it. Like I, I didn't feel like I was part of that 
knit along. I don't know how to explain it. I kind of hoped that if I focused on this every day, um, I do work, <laughs> but beyond work hours, if I w could focus on this, let's say every evening and on the weekends, that at the end of that, I would have a full shawl. So at the end of um, four or five weeks when I only had this much done, I was a little deflated. I can't deny it. I still, that still would not have put me over the edge though. I still would have kept going with this if it weren't for the fact that the finished shawl is not very deep. It's long and shallow and that is not the kind of shawl that I wear typically. So again, that just kind of was the final nail in the coffin and contributed to me finally deciding because I was on the fence for a long time. That's why it's not already frogged. I was trying to decide if I was going to frog it or if I was going to continue. Um, but finally, um, I did make the call that I am going to frog it. So these two colors, I'll show you what. So you're supposed to have two, for this project, you're supposed to have two high contrast colors. So I had the light uh, vintage celadon, and then the darker gray, and then my pop was going to be, so this is lemon lime from Pearl Soho, and this was going to be my pop of color. I will just use this for another project. I really like it. So this is going to be frogged. So I'm zero for two on the mystery knit alongs. Um, two years ago, I also, I think it was called shawlography. I started that one late. I wasn't going to participate. I started it late. I was enjoying it. I liked that shawl. Um, but I didn't like my colors. So I just stopped with that one. Yeah. So I would still like to knit shawlography. I think it's really nice. And I think that's one that I would like to, to do again. Uh, I liked the knit along. I liked the shawl. I liked the shape of it. I liked the different various elements. Um, I even liked the edge piece that a lot of people didn't like because they thought it was too carnival-like. Um, I liked the edge piece. I liked the modifications that people made when they didn't like the edge piece. Um, the only thing I didn't like was I did not like my yarns. Uh, I didn't like the color play between them. Um, I liked all the yarns individually, but I didn't like the way they were together. So that is that. So I just have a drink of water here. So the last thing I wanted to chat about was just some of my knitting related intentions for this upcoming year, 2023. So one thing that I wanted to do was I really want to take control of my stash. So I don't want it to be this forgotten pile of yarn hidden in bins and in corners of closets. I really felt like I needed to take control of my stash and use it in a way that makes me happy. When I bought those skeins, that made me happy. I was very happy to obtain the skeins. Now I don't wanna just hoard the skeins and hoard like, I, I, I certainly don't mean to be insulting to anybody. I know that a lot of people get joy just from having their stash. But I, I don't. As a matter of fact, having such a large stash um, stresses me out. And I would say my stash is probably nothing compared to a lot of people. And maybe it's a lot more than others. So maybe I fall somewhere in the middle. But it doesn't bring me joy to have all this yarn stashed. There's a couple reasons for that. One is when we were moving to our new home and I had to pack everything into bins, it kind of really brought home how much I had. Our new place doesn't have as much storage. 
and so I'm using up a lot of not only space in my home but brain space having that much inventory of yarn. I don't need to have that much inventory of yarn. I have yarn stores around me. They can store the yarn and then I can go there when I have a project that I want to accomplish and I can purchase the yarn or I can order it online. I don't need to keep it here. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that, uh, of course, damage from damage from the elements, damage from moths, you know, storing yarn can, you could end up, or I could end up losing some of it. And the other part is that I think that patterns, colors, obviously come into style and go out of style. And if I have a nice project in mind and I purchase this yarn for it in certain color ways, um, is it going to happen that by the time I actually go to do that project, I no longer care for those colorways and I no longer care about that project. I, I really don't want that to happen. So the way that I can be more intentional about managing my stash, I felt, was to input it all into Ravelry. So I actually spent a great deal of time, uh, many hours, entering, I took all my stash out, um, reorganized it so that I would I'm going to know where it is so I have different bins I have you know fingering weight sock yarn I have just regular fingering weight yarn I have bins that are just for kits and projects that are already assembled um what I did was I took it all out had a good look at it entered all of the information into Ravelry which took me a significant amount of time, photographed it, and I didn't actually care if the photographs were that good or if the color was perfectly true to life. Just wanted to get it in there because Ravelry, if you put your stash yarn into Ravelry, you now have that yarn in a searchable database. So if I have a project in mind, I can just go into Ravelry now, go into my stash and search. If I want to do DK, for example, DK, see what comes up, see what colorways I have, how many skeins I have of the same type of yarn, that sort of thing. And I kind of felt like a, a breath of release when I got all of that um, information stored into Ravelry. I felt good. I felt like I was more in control of my stash. And I also was reminded of a, a few kits and such that I had bought that I've never done and I still want to do them. So um, that is something I am actively going to work on in 2023. So I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to buy yarn. And as a matter of fact, I have already purchased yarn this year and I've purchased quite a bit of yarn already at the beginning of the year. So Lisa from Knit All the Yarn podcast decided this year to keep track of her yarn in and out um, and, and to put it all in a spreadsheet and keep track of how much she's spending on yarn if she's staying in her budget and I just thought that was a really good idea. Um, so kudos to you, Lisa. That was an excellent idea. I want to do something similar. I think what I will try and do is just try to make sure that at the end of this year, I will have knit more yarn than I have purchased or brought in. If I can continue to do that every year, then eventually my stash will go down and I won't be holding on to so much yarn. Um, I don't have an end date for that. Again, this is an intention. It's not a goal. I don't need to be, you know, stash free in 2023 or what have you. It's, it's not going to happen. Um, but I feel like getting my stash down from what it is right now or was on January 1st of 2023, by the end of the year, I can definitely have less yarn 
stash than I do right now. So I feel like one of the things that I would like to do uh, on a monthly basis is just a review with you my yarn in and out. I think it will keep me accountable to do that. Um, I am going to just pop it up onto the screen so that you can see um, how much yarn I brought in and how much I have knit. And I'm going to do it in grams the same way that Lisa's is doing because I because I just think that's a nice easy way to do it actually. So as you can see, I have brought in quite a bit of yarn. Um, a lot of that was very bulky yarn. And when you're measuring it in grams, it might seem like more than it actually is, or that's what I'm telling myself. Anyways. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so if all goes well, I will check in with you again next week and we can visit again and I can update you on my projects. I would love for you to tell me um, how you're feeling about your stash. Are you loving your stash and you want to keep it? Are you feeling like your stash is out of control and it's stressing you out a little bit? Um, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm super curious uh, to know how everyone, um, it seems to be a common thing that knitters and crocheters, we do buy more yarn than we knit. Why do we do that? It's very unusual, I think. And and I used to do this with, when I used to do scrapbooking, I used to do this with scrapbooking supplies too. Um, so I have a big hoard of scrapbooking supplies. Um, I don't know why we do that. I'm not sure. You know, I, I know it's been said that buying yarn, purchasing yarn, and knitting with yarn are two, they're two different hobbies. Um, I need to make sure it's just one hobby. And I would love to free up some of the storage uh, in my closet and in the linen closet, which is where I am storing my yarn. I'd like to, I'd like to reclaim some of that and get it back. Okay, so the last thing before I let you go would be reading and watching. I am reading The Lost Apothecary. Who's that by? I have no idea. Oh, I can't even look it up. I'm reading a book called The Lost Apothecary. I will put on the screen who the author is because it, it's, it's not coming to mind. I'm listening to it in audiobook and I am enjoying it. The reason, this is not normally a book I probably would have picked up. Um, I picked it up because uh, I joined the um, Love and Stitches membership that Nitty Natty has. And they have there is a book club as part of that membership. And the book for the month of January was The Lost Apoth Apothecary. I did not finish the book in time to join the discussion and although I still could have joined the discussion if I wanted to um I didn't I knew there'd be spoilers and um I didn't want I still want to listen to the rest of the book so that's what I'm currently listening to right now and what I'm watching is Vera so there's a new season of Vera out on BritBox I have watched the first two episodes. They generally only have four episodes a year because they're over an hour long. Um, and I think they're in their 12th season. And I really love that particular series. I think Brenda Blevin, who plays the main character of Vera, is like an amazing actress. Um, I totally buy her character. And um, I can't wait till the last two episodes come out. So that's what that's what I'm currently watching right now. Okay, so goodbye for real. I will check in with you next week. Take care until then and happy knitting. Mm -hmm.